Hi, it's Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to PSD Touch Plus. Today in the shortcut series, I would like to talk a bit about smart objects and how to use them to distort text, illustrator files, and also how to use them together with the puppet warp feature. So we know about smart objects, they are very useful. And these are the things that you might not know about that you can use also a smart object for. First of all, to distort text. So as you can see, I have a simple text layer here. And if I use the command T or uh, the free transform feature, I can only distort this text um, by horizontally or vertically. And if I hold down control or command on the keyboard, I can distort it like this, but not in a, not in a perspective way. So as you can see, it is different than working with, for example, a simple pixel layer. So I'm going to create a field selection and I'm going to use free transform. And here, if I hold down command or control, I can access the free transform mode, which is very useful because here I can easily achieve perspective, for example, for this selection. So the illusion of perspective. But if I want to do this with the text, it's only possible if you turn the text into a smart object. And with that, you can still maintain the editability of this text. So you won't need to rasterize it. You can still have it editable, but you can also use the perspective transformations on it. So let me show you how to do this. Just simply right click and choose convert to smart object. By the way, I've set up a keyboard shortcut for this feature. I use F6, so function six, which is for me to turn a layer to smart objects. And now, as you can see, it's already a smart object. And if I press command T now, I can see that cross over this text, which shows that this is a smart object. And now I can easily create a perspective uh, transformation. But the great thing is that if I press enter and accept this transformation, I can still double click on the smart objects icon here in the layers panel. And there I can easily edit the text. So for example, I can change the kerning, click between two characters and press alt or option left and right arrows. So I move these a bit closer. It's almost like changing the tracking, but let's just select them all and press alt left arrow. Okay, and maybe increase the space here between the two words. Now I press Command Enter to accept typing, and then I press Save, Command S, and then close this, Command W, lots of keyboard shortcuts. And as you can see now, we changed the text itself, but it's still in perspective. If I go back one step, this is how it looked before. And if I go forward, this is how it looks after. By the way, for undo and redo, I also use a different shortcut, a keyboard shortcut. I use F1 and F2. To be able to customize keyboard shortcuts, you just simply need to go to the keyboard shortcuts option under the edit menu and here find the feature that you are looking for. For example, the uh, undo redo is under application menus and edit and that's step forward and step backward and just simply need to click on something, press a new keyboard shortcut and accept and then click on OK. That's how easy it is to change and customize keyboard shortcuts. Now, but let's get back to distortion and using smart objects in Photoshop. So there is one working with text layers, but let me switch to Illustrator. And here in Illustrator, I have a logo that I recently designed and I'm going to select this one and copy it into Photoshop paste it in as a smart object. So I use Command C, Command V, or Control C, com Control V on PC. And once I place in an Illustrator uh, uh, element or object, it will now become a smart object because that's the option we selected. If I press Enter, now this uh, logo is placed in, into my Photoshop document, but as a smart object. This little icon here on the thumbnail icon always shows that this is a smart object. 
So now if I use free transform, I can make it bigger or sm smaller without losing quality, because this is now working as a vector file. But once again, the problem is, just like with text, if I hold down Command or Control and want to create a perspective distortion, I won't be able to do it. It's just like with the text, it's just impossible to do. Okay, so I can distort it, but not in a perspective way. So what can we do in this case? In this case, it's a bit of an interesting trick because we already have a smart object, but we can set that smart object into another smart object. So it's like uh, two smart objects uh, inside each other. So I'm going to right click and choose uh, convert to smart object once again, even though it's already a smart object, I click on it to make it into another smart object. And then if I use the free transform, now I can hold down command or control and create a perspective crop for my illustrator smart object. So that is a really cool feature, but there is one more thing which you should learn about working with smart objects, and that is when you use puppet warp. So let me switch to another uh, example, and here in this flyer, let's just say I want to change the position of this girl. So as you can see, I already have a selection. If I double click, you can see I have a mask, which I can turn on and off. So I created a mask for uh, this layer, and I have it already in a smart object. And then if I go to edit, puppet warp, I can place these pinpoints on the mesh that has been created. And I'm going to use this mesh to move uh, this girl around. So for example, if I click here on the top of the head, I can bend the head slightly, maybe move the hand up a bit and the shoulder and maybe bend the head a bit more and move this shoulder a bit down. So now if I press enter to accept this change, you can see this is after. If I go back, this was before. So it changes the whole attitude a bit. But the great thing by using a smart object, if I use the puppet warp again, you will see that we have the same pinpoints on the, on the mesh, and we can also reset this if we don't like it. So we can click on Cancel uh, Puppet Warp, or we can also play around with these features, for example, turn off the mesh, because now it's much easier to see what's happening. Okay, so using the smart object with Puppet Warp makes the Puppet Warp non-destructive, which is a great option. And that's all what I wanted to sh show you today. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks a lot for your attention. See you next time.